Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Stephanie. It's our literature unit for the month of November, and we're going to read a classic novel for this month entitled "A Tale of Two Cities," and we're talking about life, death, and sacrifice.、Uh, this book, of course, was written by Charles Dickens, and let's see, I believe it was published. Oh, gee, when was it published? Back in 1859, and it's a book that takes place during the French Revolution. Yeah, Charles Dickens is considered to be one of the world's best authors of all time. If you have a chance, I would pick up a copy. His descriptions of people and the situations they're found in are so great.、Um, he's a wonderful, wonderful writer. Of course, if you look online, you can probably find some、uh, TV series that、uh, were made based on this book. Or maybe even a movie. I don't know if you can find a movie, but I know that there are TV series that are based on this.、Um, probably nothing really recent, but you'll really enjoy it.、Um, people that usually、uh, come up with good series, TV series, are the Brits. The British are very good at putting classical novels or classic novels uh, into. Uh, Uh, screen form. So look into that. I really recommend it. I think you're going to enjoy this story. There's a lot to learn, and there's some great words, of course, as well. So let's get started. We're going to read through day one of a tale of two cities. Jarvis Lorry, a banker, is journeying from London to Paris. He intends to reunite a young French woman. Lucy Manette, with her father, who is an old friend of his. Lucy previously believed her father was dead, but in fact he'd been held captive in the Bastille, France's most secure prison, for 18 years. Doctor Manette can barely recall his past life. Lucy helps restore his mind, though he's still mentally scarred by his experience. Laurie helps them return to England. Five years later, Doctor Manette and his daughter give evidence at the trial of Charles Darnay. Darnay, accused of being a spy, is actually a French noble who has turned his back on the aristocracy. Darnay is acquitted thanks to the intervention of Sidney Carton, a lawyer who happens to look exactly like Darnay. The incident brings Lucy and Darnay together, and they fall in love. Carton too loves Lucy. However, Carton, an alcoholic scoundrel, considers himself to be an awful human being whom no one, including himself, could hold any affection for. He confesses this to Lucy and says that while he knows she could never love him, his dream is to one day perform a great service for her. Time passes. Lucy marries Darnay. And they live with Doctor Manette in a house on a street corner that always seems to echo with approaching footsteps. Perhaps these sounds forebode the terror that will soon overtake them all, as across the English Channel the streets of Paris are filled with violence. There, the French Revolution erupts with a desperate assault on the Bastille, and the chaos drags all the characters into its bloody embrace. Okay, guys. As we always do with our literature units, we're going to talk about the plot or the story first. Now there are several characters, so pay attention. You don't want to get lost. I don't think it's too confusing, but if you've never read the book or heard the names, it might be a little confusing. But we're going to talk about、uh, the plot or the story right now. So we've got Jarvis Lorry. That's his name. He's a banker, and he's journeying from London to Paris. So he lives in London. He's a British guy, and he goes over to Paris. Why is he going to Paris or journeying to Paris? Well, he wants to reunite a young French woman whose name is Lucy Manette with her father. Who is an old friend of his? So, if you, re you reunite people, you bring people together that have been、uh, separated. We're going to find out why, but that's why he's going to Paris to help Lucy reunite with her father. 
And this father of hers is actually a very old friend of Jar of、uh, Jarvis Lorry, the banker. Remember, he's the banker. Okay, so he's taking Lucy to Paris to reunite with her father, and、uh, Lucy previously believed her father was dead, but in fact he'd been held captive in the Bastille, French's most secure prison. So Lucy before thought that her father was dead; she thought he was gone. But the truth is, or in fact, he had been held captive in a prison. So if you're captive, or more specifically, if you're held captive, that means you're. You're a prisoner. You're kept in jail for a crime you've committed, or maybe because of some political problems. Right now, this is an adjective, guys, but it also can be a noun. If you say he is a captive,、uh, it's someone who's being kept as a prisoner. Typically in a war, but also maybe because they broke the law. So he was kept captive in a huge prison in Paris called the Bastille, and it was France's most secure prison. Is something secure? It means you can't get out of it.、Uh, you want good security for your home, meaning you want good locks on your doors and windows.、Uh, but if you're in a Secure facility. It means it's got very good security, and it's very hard to either get in or get out. Well, you can imagine、uh, if you're a prisoner in a prison, you don't really want a secure prison. But the people that are outside the prison sure do. They don't want the prisoners getting out. So remember, he's been held captive for quite a while, and、uh, here it says 18 years. So you can imagine it really affected him. Uh, indeed, and of course, the Bastille is famous because that's where the French Revolution began way back in 1789. So that is an important date to remember when you're reading this book. But again, the father. Was held in this prison, and it's a, a secure prison, and he was there for 18 years. And、uh, Doctor Manette, of course, has been there for so long he can't remember his past life. And Lucy, his daughter, helps restore his mind. To restore just means to return something to its original condition. So she probably says, "Don't you remember, Dad, when I had my fourth birthday and you gave me that puppy dog? Don't you remember that? It was such a happy day. We had our birthday party next to the Seine River in Paris." It was so much fun.、Uh, maybe she、uh, mentioned all these things、uh, in the, her childhood or things in the past, and that helped him remember. It helped him restore his mind. He could uh, uh, be sane again. You can re use restore to talk about、uh, the economy. Maybe the economy's been bad for a while, and you hope that you can restore、uh, the the economy to what it was before COVID. Those are some ways you can use restore. You can also restore an old car. Maybe you bought an antique or a classic car, and you want to restore it. Well, she's trying to help him get his mind back, his memories, probably by loving him, reminding him of their life before he was put into prison for 18 years. Horrible. It says here he was still mentally scarred by this experience of being in prison for 18 years. Now, usually you use scar as a noun, and it's、uh, if you get a cut or a wound on your skin, and it. Heals. It leaves that permanent whitish mark on your skin. That's a scar. But we also use it to talk about someone who's been through a really bad experience, maybe very horrible, painful, unpleasant. And here it's a now it's a verb. So we're going to say someone has been scarred by something. So maybe someone has been through a horrible childhood and they were scarred by their childhood experiences. So if you're scarred, it just means you can get better, but you always will have that impact remaining inside you somewhere. Yep,、uh, he was in prison, so maybe the guards beat and tortured him a lot, or he did not get together. Excuse me, he did not get along with the other prisoners. They also beat him and tortured him and stuff like that, and so he was scarred by his experience. He could never forget that. Like veterans of wars are scarred by their experiment, their experience. They can't forget what happened, what they saw happen. And then, of course, Laurie did reunite Lucy and her father, and then. Lori helps the two of them return to England. Okay, so that's the first part of the story, and then five years after that, Doctor Manette and his daughter give evidence at the trial of Charles Darnay. 
So remember, Lucy is the daughter of Doctor Manette. So they've been in England for five years, and then there's a trial.、Uh, there's this trial that's going on in court, and then this person is in trouble. His name is Charles Darnay. He is on trial, but、uh, Doctor Manette and his daughter give evidence at the trial. So if you give evidence, of course, you give information、uh, during a court, during a trial that、uh, helps determine whether the person is guilty or. Whether the person is innocent. Yes, I saw them that night, or、oh, I have the、uh, the gun that was used in the crime. It's got his fingerprints. Yes, you gave evidence. You let the court know what you know. It's an interesting phrase. It's used in England or the UK. If you're an American, you say you were a witness in a trial or you testified for the the defense or the prosecution. Yeah, to give evidence. I I remember the first time I watched a British.、Uh, TV show about their court system, and I thought, oh, they say give evidence. Yeah, we really don't. We testify or、um, are a witness in a trial. So, Doctor Manette and his daughter、um, are giving evidence at the trial of Charles Darnay. We're going to learn more about Darnay, but、uh, and he will be a very important figure in this. But first, we're going to take a short break and listen to our Chinese teacher. 听众朋友，大家好，我是安娜。我们今天开始连续三天，要带大家看一个文学巨作，叫做《双城记》。这个《双城记》呢，《A Tale of Two Cities》，它是十九世纪 Charles Dickens 狄更斯这个文豪的一个经典的作品。故事一开始是这样子的：有一位主角，其实应该算是配角了。这个配角叫做 Jarvis l a u r i e 他就出现在第一天。第一段这个第一句的地方，那么 Lori 他是一个银行家，那么当时呢，他就要从伦敦回到法国去。那他带着一个法国的女人，这个女生出现在第二句，这个主角 Lucy Manette， 她是谁呢？她就是这整个小说环绕着的主角，叫做 Doctor Manette， 曼奈特医生他的女儿。那么 ，Lori 要带着他干什么呢 ？Lori 其实是要带着 Lucy Manette 跟他的父亲重聚。在第一段当中的第二句啊，出现了一个非限用、非限定用法，补充说明的关系子句。先行词是 her father， 逗点之后的 who 到句尾是补充说明。补充说明什么呢？也就是 Lori 他有一个老朋友，也就是 Doctor Manette。但是 Lori 其实一直都在抚养 Doctor Manette， 他的女儿叫做 Lucy Manette， 所以现在故事呢，就先从 Lori 带着 Lucy 回去看爸爸，跟爸爸重聚的这个桥段开始。好，那么因为其实 Lucy 呢，本来之前以为他父亲已经死了，但是其实 Doctor Manette 是被关在法国非常有名、守卫非常森严的一个 Bastille， 就是巴士底监狱。那当时 ，Doctor Manette 在那边呢，真的非常的痛苦，几乎没有办法回忆出他之前原本的生活。而 Lucy 跟他重聚之后呢，就帮忙他的父亲恢复记忆。当然，虽然在精神上啊，这个 Doctor Manette 他整个的这个精神上呢，在因为过去的这个经历有一些创伤，但是他的好朋友 Lori 还是帮助他们返回英国了。那么五年之后，我们进入到第二段。Doctor Manette 跟他的女儿，因为在某一次的审判当中作证，接下来就到了这个场景。那么作证是为了什么样的审判呢？第二段第一句当中，最后面提到一个主角出现了 ，Charles Darnay。Charles Darnay 是另外一个主角哦。这个审判是围绕着他。为什么 ？We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. 
Okay, let's continue to summarize the plot of our featured novel, A Tale of Two Cities. Remember, we've got Jarvis Lorry, the banker. He takes Lucy to France to reunite with her father. The father can't really remember his past, but she helps him regain his mind. She helps him restore his mind, and then the three of them return to England. And five years later, there's a trial going on, and the doctor, Doctor Manette, the father, and his daughter provide evidence. They give testimony. They give evidence at a trial, and it's the trial of Charles Darnay. So, what's wrong with Charles Darnay here? Well, Darnay, accused of being a spy, is actually a French noble. Who has turned his back on the aristocracy? So, if you're a spy, that means you're getting information from another country without them knowing about it. So, of course, in countries all over the world, there are spies. China has spies in the U.S. getting information about the U.S. and the U.S. probably has spies in China as well. So, in this particular case, he's accused of being a spy. I suppose a spy from France spying on England. Right, that's that's it exactly. So he's accused of being a spy, and you find out that he's actually a French noble or a French nobleman who has turned his back on the aristocracy. So the aristocracy, of course, is royalty. They're born into wealthy families that have a lot of power, and this was the case in France and England and Germany and all those countries at this period of time in history. So he turned his back on. If you turn your back on someone, it means you refuse to help them or support them. Or even be involved with them. You walk away from them. So、uh, you might have a friend who has turned his back on his family. Or sometimes you see people on the street who are taking their pet and leaving it on the street and then driving away. They turn their back on their pet, their dog. They refuse to take care of it. Well, he had turned his back on the aristocracy. He didn't like who they were. He didn't think that、uh, he wanted to live that life. So Darnay is acquitted thanks to the intervention of someone whose name is Sidney Carton, a lawyer who happens to look exactly like Darnay. Now remember that that's a very big piece of this plot or piece of the puzzle. Intervention. Now if you're acquitted, it means you went through a trial. People thought you were guilty of something, but then the uh, jury uh, listened to the evidence and they listened to the witnesses and they decided at the end. And that you were not guilty. So, if you're acquitted, it means you were found not guilty, and you can go back to your regular life. You're free to return to your life now. Why did this happen? Well, it was because of Sidney Carton and his intervention. Right to intervene. That's the verb. You just get involved in something that you weren't involved with before. So indeed,、uh, you can have intervention in all sorts of things. If、uh, your friends are having a fight, you can intervene. You can kind of step in and say, "Hey, what's the problem here? You know, you guys need to talk this out. Quit having this argument." And the act of intervening is called intervention. So because of the intervention of Sidney Carton, the French noble who turned us. Back on the aristocracy, Mr. Darnay, he was acquitted because, again, of that intervention. Now the incident brings Lucy and Darnay together. Darnay is probably a handsome man, and Lucy's probably beautiful. So this incident or this、uh, trial actually brings Lucy and Darnay together. They meet and they fall in love. Now Carton too. Poor guy, he loves Lucy as well, but Lucy already loves Darnay, so he、um, he doesn't have a very good. Life though, Carton, you find out, is an alcoholic scoundrel. Oh no! Yeah, if you're alcoholic, you're addicted to alcohol.、Uh, alcohol can get you drunk. Well, if you're an alcoholic, it's very hard for them not to have alcohol every day.、Um, they need it because their body just craves it, so they're addicted. Scoundrel is kind of an old-fashioned word. But you'll see it in these kinds of classic books. A scoundrel is kind of a bad man, a dishonest person, especially someone who has cheated other people or has been dishonest with other people.、Um, sometimes, even today, we'll call as a joke. We'll say, "Oh, he's such a scoundrel." Scoundrel is kind of a fun word from, I would say, the 1800s and 1900s. But again, you'll still hear it today. 
Yeah, you might、uh, hear the term nowadays, a low life or a low life scum or something like that. But back then they said scoundrel. We don't really use it so much nowadays. But、uh, yes, Carton looks exactly like Darnay, but unfortunately he turns out to be an alcoholic scoundrel, and、uh, he realizes this.、Uh, he considers himself to be an awful human being, whom no one, including himself, could hold any affection for. So he knows he's a bad guy. He knows he's a scoundrel. So at least he's realistic about this, and he knows that、uh, nobody could love him, and he won't even love him im- himself. He won't even love himself, right? And he has no affection for himself. Affection just means love, care, feelings for someone. Yeah, fondness for someone, a feeling of liking someone or loving someone.、Uh, yeah, we have affection for people. You can also use this phrase to hold affection for someone or have affection for someone. And he confesses、uh, this to Lucy. He tells Lucy he's in love with her, but also says, you know, he's not a good guy. So while he knows she could never love him. Remember, she loves Darnay. His dream is to one day perform a great service for her, and we're going to find out he has that opportunity in this book. So time passes. Moving on, time passes. Lucy marries Darnay, and they live with Doctor Manette, Lucy's dad, in a house on a street corner that always seems to echo with approaching footsteps. So it always feels like, or they always kind of hear that sound of footsteps coming down that street. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, echo just means echo, echo, echo. The sound you hear、uh, when you yell in a mountain valley or something like that. But to echo with just means you keep hearing the sound over and over. And they keeps hearing the sound of approaching footsteps, like someone is walking and they're getting closer and closer. And remember, back in those days, they didn't really wear sneakers and sandals so much. Okay, they wore those kind of、uh, leather shoes that made A kind of sound when someone was walking towards you. So of course they heard these approaching footsteps. But whose footsteps could they be? Could it be a ghost? We don't really know. But、uh, perhaps these sounds forebode the terror that will soon overtake them all. Ooh, sounds kind of、uh, mysterious, kind of scary. Forebode is a word you don't see very often. It just means to warn of some sort of event in advance. Gives you kind of feeling that there's danger around the corner, or you just have that unsettled feeling.、Uh, foreboding, we'll see that form of the word quite often, but、uh, yeah, forebode the terror. So kind of gave them a, an advanced warning that terror would overtake them all. Now, what's happening across the English Channel? The English Channel is that. Narrow piece of water、uh, between southern England and northern France. It connects them, and the people uh, uh, go back and forth across the Channel to get from one country to another. Well, over across in Paris, they're undergoing a French Revolution. Uh, which means the people are rising up and rebelling against the leaders, the French aristocracy, the king and the queen, and they're trying to get rid of them. They ultimately do by、uh, killing them, of course. But where all of this、uh, revolution starts is at the Bastille prison, and that's why they call their Independence Day Bastille Day. In America, we call it the Fourth of July, right?、Fourth、well, for us, it's the Fourth of July,、yeah. but for them, it's the Fourteenth of July. It's Bastille Day, exactly. And of course, that marks that、uh, storming of the mob on that prison there. Yeah,、uh, that's、uh, that. What's、uh, that is what began the French Revolution way back in 1789. So, indeed, that's an important location for French people, the Bastille, and as you said, the Bastille or Bastille Day is their day of independence or national. National holiday there, and so that's what's going on in France at the time. The French Revolution has erupted; it has begun, and there has been a desperate assault on the Bastille, which was the event I was just mentioning here. Desperate means people are at the end of their rope; they're at the end of their tether; they have no other choice. So they attacked this prison, and then chaos erupted. Right, and it says here the chaos drags all the characters into its bloody embrace or a bloody hug, kind of fun wording there by our author.、Um, 
really fun.、Um, right now, guys, we're out of time, but we're not done talking about the plot. So come back for day two. We'll continue talking about the story of a tale of two cities. We hope you'll join us then. Before we leave, though, we're going to listen one more time to our Chinese teacher. Because Darny, he was being described as a spy. And Darny is who? In fact, he is a member of the Qing dynasty of Wei. Okay. Next, we see that Darny is a member of the Qing dynasty of Wei. Let's put the word "a French noble" here. It's a noble noun. And the noble noun refers to the noble noun. The noble noun refers to the noble noun. It means that he was being described as a noble noun. 法国侯爵，不过因为多亏了另外他的律师的调停 ，Darny 好险后来就是无罪了。那我们看到一个主角又出现了，在第三句的地方，第三句大概中间的地方，逗点前面 ，Sydney Carton，Sydney Carton 是 Darny 的律师，而且很巧的是啊，他。跟 Darny 两个两个人长得很像哎，几乎一模一样，这这就是一个巧合。好，不过呢 ，Carton 这个律师啊，他基本上是一个酗酒的流氓，而且他觉得自己很恶劣、很坏，没有任何人，包括他自己，都不可能喜欢自己。我们看一下同样第二段的第六句的地方，第六句大概在中间的地方有个先行词 an awful human being。一个很糟糕的人，后面的 who 一直到句尾可以左右挂号，挂号里面的限定用法的文意是没有人，包括他自己会喜欢上他，而且啊，他也对 Lucy 坦诚这一点，连他自己都不喜欢自己。虽然他知道 Lucy 不可能喜欢他，言下之意是其实 Carton 很爱 Lucy， 但是。虽然 Lucy 是不可能会喜欢上他，但是他希望有一天能够为 Lucy 能够做一件什么样伟大的事情。同样，在第二段第七句最后一句的地方，逗点之后的 while 是 although 的意思哦。好，那么时光就流逝啦。那因为 Darny 跟 Lucy 两个人呢发生了情感，然后后来也结婚了。那于是他们就跟这个 Lucy 的父亲 Doctor Benny。Doctor Manette 就住在街角的某一栋房子。可是啊，这栋房子在这个故事当中有很重要的意象，因为这栋房子啊，似乎一直都会回荡着脚步声。也就是呢，有人走经过这个房子，哒哒哒哒的声音就会在他的房子里面回荡。那么这些声音呢，其实是预示着很快就会笼罩所有人的恐惧，也就是法国大革命。我们最后这一段，请注意一下第二句的地方。第二句也有一个限定用法的关系子句，先行词是 a house on the street corner。关系子句从后面的 that 一直到句尾。那么第三句也有一个限定用法的关系子句哦，先行词是恐惧 the terror。后面的 that 到逗点是限定用法的关系子句。好，那么逗点之后的 as 呢，则是。Because, 因为接下来就爆发了法国大革命。我们明天会带大家看故事的内容。我是安娜，我们明天见。That brings us to the end of our lesson for today. But please join us again next time when we continue to summarize a tale of two cities, a novel by Charles Dickens. Until that time, I'm Tom. I'm Stephanie. Goodbye. See ya.